All right, just gonna give uh, folks a few more minutes to filter into the room and then we will kick it off uh, and I'll just go over a few housekeeping items. I'll throw that all into the chat as well. All right, top of the hour. So in uh, lieu of the time, we're gonna kind of get this started pretty briefly. Um, and go over it really briefly. And then uh, again, I will put everything I'm saying into the chat for, for you. So welcome to the Noble Virtual College Fair. So happy to have you here virtually. Uh, you are going to hear from six amazing institutions. Uh, they are experts. So please, please, please ask them questions. Uh, they would love to answer these questions for you. And then the other thing that is so incredibly important is take down their contact information. Uh, contact these folks. Again, they are the experts to see if this is a good fit for you. So if you have questions throughout this session, please use the Q&A button. Don't wait to the end. Uh, the sooner you put in your question, the more likely it is to get answered. So use that Q&A button, because uh, again, our panels cannot see or hear you. It's either at the top of your screen or the bottom. Uh, you can sign up for the next time slot, the same place that you signed up for this one, and a recording of everything, the Q&A, the chat, uh, the audio, and the video will be available at StriveScan dot com forward slash noble. I will also throw that into the chat for you as well. All right. And with that, we are going to kick it off with Wayne State University. All right. That sounds great. Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. I'm so happy to be here with you guys today. I'm going to share my screen and give you a quick presentation. Um, I already put my name, contact information in the chat. So if you have questions that perhaps I don't get to, or you want to ask uh, later in the presentation or maybe afterward, always save that and you can certainly reach out to me however you're comfortable. I'm happy to help you with that. But with further, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So as I mentioned, my name is Erica. I'm an admissions counselor at Wayne State University, which is located right in the heart of downtown Detroit in Michigan. We were founded in 1868 uh, as originally Detroit Medical College. Um, now we have 13 schools and colleges, which I'll talk a little bit more about on the next slide. We're the third largest university in the state of Michigan, in the top 50 largest in the country with just around 27,000 students hailing from 48 of the 50 states and 76 different countries. We're also really proud um, to have Michigan's most diverse campus. So if that's something that is important to you, that's, uh, this is a great university to consider. We are Michigan's only urban public research university in that we are located, like I said, right in the heart of Detroit. We have 13 schools and colleges, which you can see listed below that big number 13 with over 350 majors to offer you. Uh, we have a 16 to one student to faculty ratio. So what that means for you is even though we are one of the biggest universities and have a ton of resources, uh, we still maintain a pretty reasonable classroom size. I myself was a student at Wayne State and never had a class, I don't think over 25, 20 to 25 students. Uh, we also have a Wayne Med Direct program for students who are interested in a direct admit program to a med school, which is a great school. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so consider doing that. It comes with a lot of financial aid, essentially a full ride all the way through med school. So consider uh, looking into that if you're interested. Just to give you some idea of our rankings, we are the top two medical and law schools in the state of Michigan. We are in the top 20% for social work programs in the country, top 100 fine arts programs, uh, and top 100 most innovative schools. And we are also listed among best uh, business schools by Princeton Review. Students are always curious what the incoming freshman um, averages were. So just to give you a sense, our most recent incoming freshman class was uh, just over 3,000 and had an average SAT of 1110, ACT of 24, and a GPA of 3.43. By no means are these uh, admissions requirements. These are simply what students have as they're entering. We definitely do a holistic approach. So do not feel like you need to have these numbers by any means to apply. As a big university, we have a lot to do on campus. That was one of my favorite things as a student there. So whether you're into or clubs, sports, arts, dance, feeding squirrels, we have a squirrel feeding club. We have over 500 student clubs and organizations. 18 NCAA Division II sports teams, whether you're an athlete or you just like to be a spectator, there's really a lot to do on campus. 
So many of our students decide they want to stay on campus. I think they recognize the value and the unique experience that comes with living in an urban city and going to school at the same time. While we do not require our freshmen to stay on campus, they are more than welcome to stay in one of our seven residence halls and apartment buildings, of which our newest is the Anthony Wayne Drive Apartments that were just completed in 2018. Housing ranges pretty broadly in terms of price and style and types of roommates you can have and setups. So the range um, in our housing rates is anywhere from 5,700 per year to about 12,600 per year, depending on what your needs are. For financial aid and tuition, we have in-state tuition at just under 14,000. Typically out of state is 29,000. However, all Illinois residents are going to receive guaranteed an out-of-state scholarship, either our Great Lakes Award, which is in-state tuition plus 10%, or our Discover Detroit Award if you qualify for that merit scholarship, which just gives you in-state tuition. On top of that, we have merit scholarships that you, you would automatically be considered for if you apply by our deadline, um, need-based scholarships that you would automatically be considered for just by turning in your application by the December 1st early scholarship deadline or February 1st regular deadline. And if that's not enough, we also have private departmental and athletic scholarships that you can then seek out and also apply for if you're interested. So I talked a little bit about our location already, but being located where we are really does have its perks. Being in a major city, you have access to performance spaces, businesses, restaurants, anything that really comes with being in a major city. But I will also just throw a little add in in there that Detroit truly is a magical, magical place. I've gone to school uh, in a couple of different places, including Chicago, and I love city life, but Chicago, I mean, sorry, Detroit really has some unique qualities and characteristics about it that make it a really awesome place to study. Applying is a very simple process. We make it very streamlined for you. You can apply directly on our website at wayne.edu slash apply, or you can also find us on the Common app when you're ready to apply. You wanna make sure we get your transcripts uh, from your counselors. And then also in a normal year, we would be asking for SAT or ACT. I know this year we have gone test optional and we are hoping to offer test optional again for applicants for fall 2022. Um, if that is not an option though, I would say prepare and, and make sure you have those scores ready. But we would let you know essentially when you're applying. So hopefully you guys decide to take a tour. We offer virtual tours two ways. One, by going to wayne.edu slash tour, you can do a self-guided tour, um, kind of a virtual reality tour, which is really cool. I highly encourage it. The other is to actually register to have a tour guide who's going to be live, take you around campus virtually and show you around and share their experiences, which is a great way to learn about that. And you go to wayne.edu slash visit for that. And with that, this is my contact information. I already put it in the chat for you guys at the beginning of my presentation, but I really, really hope you save my number, uh, my email. You can text, call, email me anytime you like. I can't promise I'll always answer you at 2 a.m., but if you send one at 2 a.m., I will get to it the next day. So I hope to hear from you guys. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next up, we have Eastern Michigan University. Hi everyone, my name is Tracy. I'm Senior Admissions Advisor here at Eastern Michigan University. I'm also joined by one of my student staff, Jaden, who is also a uh, Illinois resident. So him and I are gonna tag team the presentation today and you'll get a perspective from a student that actually came over to Michigan from Illinois. Um, Eastern Michigan University founded in 1849 as the Michigan State Normal College. Um, we have over 200 uh, different programs and uh, over 220 different clubs and organizations for students to be a part of. We are located in Ypsilanti, Michigan, which is about 10 minutes from Ann Arbor and about 45 minutes from Detroit. So we're not too far from uh, the places that were just discussed um, with Wayne State. Um, we're right down the street. We're about a four hour commute from, um, from the Chicago area. So pretty easily accessible up um, 94. The next slide that I'm gonna go through here has a, has a fairly uh, compact list of all of the programs and colleges that we have on campus. Um, a full list can be found at emish.edu backslash degrees. Um, our class sizes are fairly small. We have about a 17 to one student to teacher ratio. Um, so it's pretty awesome if you're looking to, you know, really have a unique and individual experience. Um, our students know our professors, our professors know our students, um, and it's a really great learning environment that way. Um, Lots of great renovations have happened on our campus recently. We just um, opened a brand new $40 million renovated College of Engineering and Technology. 
Um, we renovated our recreation department, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, we, two years ago, renovated our science complex and we just opened a brand new IHA health center on campus. So lots of great things happening on campus for Eastern. Um, my next slide here is um, a little bit more of the fun stuff, which Jaden's gonna talk about from the student perspective, our life on campus. Um, so I'll let him kind of chat with you about that. Hi everyone, thank you, Tracy. My name is Jaden and I'm a sophomore here at Eastern. I'll just go through some basic life on the campus stuff. So we have our student support services, mainly run through our library. Um, the support services are gonna be ranging from tutoring, our writing center to kind of help like proofread some of your papers, especially if it's your first time writing a research paper. Um, we also have our DCI, our diversity and community involvement hosted here at our student center, as well as our UACDC, which is our university advising and career development, in case you're just uncertain of what you want to do for your profession or your major. Um, we also have some opportunities for students to get involved, whether that's volunteering, uh, music, dance, band, orchestra, choir, anything like that. We also have Greek life. We have fraternities and sororities on campus, um, whether those are social or um, geared towards academics, whether it's chemistry or theater. Uh, we also have over 200 plus organizations on campus ranging from academic and just fun, wacky clubs like our sword fighting club, our uh, SpongeBob watching, Oreo eating, all the wacky ones that we have. Um, we also have club and intramural sports, which are my absolute favorite. Um, just because it, um, it allows you to get involved and meet other people. Um, going more into sports, we do have 18 varsity sports and it is free for all students to attend those home games, which is really fun in case you're, you're into all that. And we, like Tracy said, we do have our updated recreational facilities, just like the rec um, I am. And soon we'll have a wall, a rock climbing wall. So I'm super excited about that. Um, last but not least, I want to talk about some study abroad programs that are offered, whether it be a full semester, a full year, or just a one week. Um, the most popular one right now is the one in England to do a Harry Potter immersion experience. So if that interests you, I highly recommend checking it out. And then, ah, here we go, uh, housing and dining. So we do have over 10 residence halls and 14 on-campus apartments. Um, the residence hall styles are going to range from our apartment style, um, where it's kind of mimicking our suite style, but it just allows for a large living space to be shared by all suite mates. Then we have our suite style, which is our most popular and most common. Um, and then we have our communal style, which is the ones you might see in like TVs and movies where everyone shares that one bathroom on that floor. In these residence halls, we do have different communities ranging from all sorts of stuff. We have arts appreciation, um, brotherhood and sisterhood scholars, our CSIE, which is kind of like our scientific inquiry studies, um, gender inclusive, health and wellness, honors, residence hall, spectrum, trio, transfer students, and global village. Um, so we have many different communities for students to kind of live and be a part with one another. And with that, Tracy, I'll hand it back on to you. Awesome, thank you. And if you have questions regarding, you know, uh, what, it ex what it's like to come from out of state, Jane's an awesome resource, um, especially from the Chicago area. Moving into costs and scholarships, most importantly for you, we have no out-of-state fees for students. All students pay the in-state tuition, whether you're from Illinois, Indiana, New York, Texas. Um, and this is just a list of some scholarships that are available to our incoming freshman students. I'm gonna go over them briefly, um, but you can, I will put the links to the, to the website in our chat. Um, our Emerald Scholarship, every student is automatically considered for that upon a application based on merit, so GPA only. Um, you get that for all four years, as long as you uh, maintain a 275 or higher. We have our forward graduation scholarship based on a 3.0. We have our education first opportunity scholarship. If you find out you are Pell Grant eligible in October when you fill out that FAFSA, um, you would need a 3.0 GPA to qualify. And then we have our presidential scholarship, which is the only one at this time that we still require a test score for. What's next? So our application process is pretty smooth and simple. Um, if you are a current junior, it's not open quite yet. It will be open in June. Um, but you can use the QR code there to head to our kit card, which is our keep in touch card. Um, when you go to apply, it's a pretty simple form. We need an official transcript from either your high school counselor or from parchment. Um, and we were test optional this year. We are hoping to be test optional again next year, um, but we will let you know that as we get closer. Um, so we don't require any essays, no, you know, nothing like that. It's a, it's a pretty straightforward process. 
Um, we have some vi great visit options right now virtually as well as in person. If you are interested in coming, you can get on our wait list. You can also take a self-guided tour in person with us, which is pretty cool. Um, and again, I will put all of those links in there as well. My information, again, Tracy Cordy, I'm Senior Admissions Advisor here at Eastern. Um, you can reach me at that 6453 number um, or at my email address, and I will put my person, my phone line for my office as well in here too. Um, and with that, I believe we are all wrapped up. I will give my, uh, it's blocky Friday for us on campus. So hopefully you guys got some Eagle spirit um, in the future. All right, thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have Northern Michigan University. Hi everyone, um, my name is Sarah and I am the Regional Admissions Counselor at Northern Michigan University. And I'm realizing I started the slide on the wrong, or the presentation on the wrong slide. So forgive me here while we go through the beginning. Um, but for those of you that are not uh, sure where Northern Michigan University is, we're located in the Upper Peninsula. Um, which is in uh, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So if you didn't know, Michigan actually has two parts of the state. So you basically go through Wisconsin to get up to us. Um, and from Chicago area, we're about six and a half hours away, but we're four blocks away from Lake Superior. So it's very scenic up there, um, totally different vibe than kind of what we're used to in Chicago. And I'm, I'm regional also, so I'm, I'm, I'm based in the Chicago area, um, but it's, it's pretty fun up there. Um, and generally when I say, you know, six and a half hours north, the next question is, but doesn't it snow a lot up there? And the answer is yes, uh, but hopefully that doesn't scare you too much. Uh, we do have underground tunnels and overhead skywalks connecting a lot of our buildings, um, but it's a, a totally different kind of um, snow here. I feel like, you know, it snows and it's traffic and the snow gets dirty and it's not much fun but up there you can go out and go snowboarding skiing go snowshoeing you know ride fat tire bikes through the trails um so it's a totally different type of environment um, but we're a mid-sized school just under eight thousand students um top 20 best affordable pre-med degree programs uh, top 10 in construction management uh, top 50 best schools in the u.s for education majors just to give you an idea of some of the statistics but in the class setting we're definitely much more personal more of the one-on-one -on -one type of setting um, student to faculty ratio is 20 to 1 and the average class size is 28. we have 177 different programs but within that um, these are some of our, our top areas. So nursing biology, within biology, we have zoology, um, arts and design. So like Nickelodeon and Pixar hire quite a bit for our, um, like our animation, illustration, digital cinema type programs. But then we have, you know, criminal justice, environmental studies, and everything else that you see listed on here as well. Um, some of our signature programs, um, forensic um, anthropology is a pretty big program, um, medicinal plant chemistry, we actually were the first university to launch this program maybe five or six years ago now, um, that focuses in the cannabis industry, but not only the science part, but also the business aspect as well. Um, cyber and robotics, you know, cancer research, so students going into the neuroscience and then Bayer Center. Um, for students going into the behavior analysis program. So you get to work with children with autism uh, spectrum disorders. Um, so definitely much more of the hands-on. Lots of opportunities for jobs on campus. In regards to our cost, so tuition and fees is 17,200. That's for all your classes. It includes a laptop for students. Then you have your room and board, which is your you know, food, dorm, laundry, Wi-Fi, cable. And that's 11,000 for a full year for out-of-state students. And uh, so for a full year, you're looking at 28,200. Um, as far as scholarships go, if you have a 3.0 GPA or higher, you automatically get the National Academic Award and that's $5,600. Um, that scholarships would bring your cost from out of state tuition to in state. And if you have anywhere between a 2.25 and a 2.99, you get $3,000. And 
in addition, and there's no requirement for test score. Um, in addition to those, we have these here as well. Uh, you can kind of see the different criteria. You know, some will require a test score. Some you do not need to have uh, a test score in order to get these scholarships. Um, and then we have the precedentials where you we you know you can compete for um, ten full rides, ten full tuition, and two hundred smaller scholarships. And for that, you have to have a 3.7 GPA and no test score or a 3.5 GPA um, with a 24 or 1160 SAT. As far as living on campus, you have to live on campus for two years, freshman year and sophomore year. Our dorms are suite style, so two bedrooms connected by a bathroom. So it's kind of nice, a little bit more private. Campus is pretty close by or like everything's kind of compact. You don't need, you know, public transportation or a car to get around. Um, so that's kind of nice. Everything's within a five minute walking distance. Um, and then lots of opportunities for study abroad, um, internships as well. Um, we offer lots of support services for students, anything from you know, counseling services or all, in, or all of our incoming freshmen go through a program called FYE, which is your first year experience program. And that's what helps you transition from the high school side to college uh, to be able to transition um, you know, from one to the other. Uh, lots of opportunities to get involved on campus. Then we also have um, you know, our sports. We're division two with everything except for men's ice hockey, which is D1. Then we have our club sports and then intramural sports as well. So there's a long list for that. If you wanna go onto that website and check them out, feel free to do so. Um, we have a rec center on campus and through them you can rent kayaks, canoes, paddle boards, camping gear, all that fun stuff to go out and enjoy the outdoors. We were ranked as um, one of the best small towns for outdoor adventure, best trails in the US, uh, top 20 safest college campuses in the US. And um, uh, let's see here, outside of that, real quick, what I'll go over is um, we have lots of opportunities for virtual visits. Um, I think that's the easiest one right now um, if you're not able to travel. And here's the website for that. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Uh, next up, we have Western Michigan University. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Kate, and I'm the admission counselor for Western Michigan University. I am also a super proud Western alum. I'm a Bronco. I, I bleed brown and gold. Uh, so Western at a glance. We were founded in 1903 as a teacher's college. Since then, we have grown to be a mid-sized university at just under 22,000 students. Um, even though we're a mid-sized university, we have big school opportunities. You see that we are in the top 10% of colleges and universities in the country. We have 150 different major programs. We are division one varsity sports, um, but we have that small school attention and feel as well. Our average class size is 32. Um, that was before COVID um, and our student to faculty ratio is 16 to one. So our academic quality and learning environment, we are home to seven different academic colleges. Um, each of those colleges has nationally ranked programs. We have quite the list of nationally ranked programs. So I'll be brief and just mention a few. Um, we have aviation, paper engineering, um, occupational therapy, jazz, theater. Um, those are some of our more popular programs as well as nursing. Um, we are a top tier research university. So for you as a student, what does that mean? Um, even in your undergrad, you're making a difference in the community and the world. We have students who have worked with companies like Apple and Starbucks uh, developing products in their undergrad that are used today. Um, so here at Western, you're really getting that jump into your career and your future. Uh, we have a great campus community. Uh, life on campus as a Bronco is supportive. Uh, we have academic supports like the Bronco Study Zone, which is staffed with tutors from every discipline. We have the Writing Center, which you can guess by the name, helps you with writing. Um, we also have supports like mental health supports with the WellTrack app that just checks in with you and gives you resources if you do need help. We have a peer mentor program. So our underclassmen students are matched with some upperclassmen students who have been here to kind of guide you through that process, that transition um, into college life. Um, we have a safe campus. We have a uh, police department that patrols 24 hours a day. We have um, emergency call buttons all over campus. It's, it's super safe here, very walkable. 
uh, which is something I love, but we also have a fun campus. Um, we have close to 400 student organizations. We have fraternities and sororities. Um, some of those organizations can be major based, and then we also have some of those goofy ones that other people have talked about too. Um, there really is something for everybody on campus. Um, and this is all happening in Kalamazoo. So um, I hesitate to say a city because you guys are from Chicago, um, but Kalamazoo is about 300,000 people. Um, it's growing. Um, it's an exciting community to be in. It's a great college town. We made a BuzzFeed list. I don't know if anyone really reads those anymore, <laughs> but we're in the top 15 top cities for 20 somethings. Plenty of outdoor opportunities, um, as well as a little bit of that city living. Um, and we are just uh, two and a half hours away from Chicago. So it's just a short drive um, to the west side of Michigan. So how do you get here? How do you become a Bronco? Um, here's our application process. Uh, you can do either the Gold Gateway, which is just Western specific or the Common App. Both require the same things, um, your transcripts. We are test optional again for next year. So if you guys were not able to take the ACT or SAT, no big deal. Um, you don't need it to get accepted. Um, again, I take a holistic view when I look at applications. So do send me an essay, do send a personal statement. Those aren't required, but it will definitely make you stand out in this process. Um, briefly, here are our scholarships. These are subject to change. They change every few years or so. Um, but these GPAs on a three point, uh, on a four point scale will get you scholarships here at Western. Um, so if you have a 3.5, you're automatically gonna get $1,000 a year. These do not take any extra applications or anything like that. These are automatic. Um, those are also available at our website. So you can take a look for those there. Um, since we are kind of short on time, here's a few other ways you can learn more about Western. Um, we have virtual info sessions every single day um, offered by our academic colleges. Um, we have current students that are doing um, info sessions, uh, in-person tours or virtual tours. We have both of those options. Um, or you could just choose to set up a meeting with me. Um, that is something that I encourage you to do. Um, and I will throw my contact info in the chat as well. Um, something that I didn't mention before that I want to to about that application is to make sure you get it in before the early action deadline, which is in December. Um, that's going to be your best chance at getting those scholarships um, and getting into, uh, you know, maybe certain programs that you're interested in. Um, so feel free to add some questions to the Q&A if there's anything I didn't cover and you're curious about. Uh, and thank you so much. Here's my email too, if you want to quickly jot that down. Thank you guys. All right, thank you. Uh, next up we have Indiana University. All right, good afternoon everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. My name is Jamie Newsom, and I am here with my colleague, Heather Hawker. Um, she's gonna be answering some questions in the chat. So if you do have any, please feel free to put them in there. Both Heather and I are Chicago regionals. So we are based here in Illinois and are happy to answer any questions that you might have. So we are IUPUI. IUPUI stands for Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis. Um, we are an incredibly unique institution because we're actually a joint partnership between two individual schools. So we're a joint partnership between IU and Purdue. So what does this mean? How does it work? What does it look like? Um, you actually will attend our campus in downtown Indianapolis. We have about a 500 acre campus with 30,000 students total of that about 21,000 of our students are undergraduate students. We have our own division one sports teams. We have our own housing. Um, we have our own campus center and we have our own green campus space. But at the end of the day, all of your classes are gonna be through either IU or Purdue. So what that means is that you're not actually going to earn an IUPUI degree because they don't exist. So you're going to earn either an Indiana University degree or a Purdue University degree, depending on your major. Um, we have 550 different academic programs from 16 different degree granting schools. And with 550 different majors, I can't obviously go through all of them now. I know Heather's going to drop a link in the chat that has um, more information about the different majors. But I do want to highlight some of the majors that we have that are more unique to IUPUI. Um, we do have the only fully accredited school of art and design in the state of Indiana. And this is where you can major in things like illustration, furniture design, painting, things like that. We do have the Kelly School of Business on our campus as well. If you're interested in pursuing that but wishing to be more in a metropolitan area like Indianapolis as opposed to Bloomington. We do have an undergraduate degree program in dental hygiene. 
Um, our School of Engineering and Technology are actually is our Purdue school. So you're gonna earn a, a Purdue University degree in engineering. And one of our most unique programs is our motorsports engineering. So we have the only motorsports engineering program in the country. And this is for students interested in designing cars, working on race cars, things like that great location and opportunity for you there. Um, School of Health and Informatics, Informatics and Computing. Um, we also have the School of Medicine. The reason this is on here is because we do offer undergraduate degree programs through the IU School of Medicine. So this is going to be things like medical imaging technology, clinical lab science, et cetera. You can actually earn a four-year degree there. Our School of Nursing is one of the largest schools of nursing in the country. Um, and one of the great things about our campus is that we are very much a life science campus. So we have five hospitals that are on or attached to our campus, which means a a wide range of access for you to internships, research opportunities, clinicals, etc. We have the only school of philanthropy in the country, so if you want to major in philanthropy, you could check us out. Um, again, the School of Public and Environmental Affairs, School of Public Health, our School of Science, which is our other Purdue school, so the degree programs through there are going to earn you Purdue degrees. Our most unique program in there is our Forensic Science program, so we're one of 24 fully accredited Forensic Science programs in the United States. And then last but not least, the School of, of Social work. So definitely check these out. Like I said, it's a lot of information, a lot of different majors that we offer. Um, I get asked a lot, can you major in um, things from both schools? And the answer is absolutely yes. If you wanted to major in biology, but you also really had an interest in art and design, you could double major in both and you would walk away with both a Purdue degree and an IU degree at the same time. So I mentioned we're downtown Indianapolis, about 500 acres just to the west of downtown. Um, everything that you would want to do in downtown Indianapolis is going to be within about a, five, a 20 minute walk of campus. We are the third largest school in the Midwest and only about a three hour drive from Chicago land area. So it is a pretty easy commute to get back down to campus. Um, not only are we the third largest city in the Midwest, but we're also the state capital of Indiana. So in terms of access to internships from Fortune 500 companies, federal, state, and local agencies, it's all going to be right outside your back door. Um, 500 different student organizations on campus. We have a fantastic multicultural center, which provides not only um, uh, symposiums, they provide um, resources for students are going to also sponsor our multicultural groups as well as our scholarships. So um, great opportunity for students there. Campus Rec, um, we have a huge Campus Rec Center with both uh, intramural and club sports. Um, our jewel of our campus rec center is actually our pool. So our pool is considered one of the best pools in the country. Um, so every couple of years, the US Olympic swim and dive team will come to campus and swim on our, on our pool. Division one athletics, on-campus housing, we do have on-campus housing, and then other events and programs such as our Jagapalooza, which is a huge carnival that we do, and then our Jagathon, which is a dance marathon that we do every year. So how to apply? Um, it's fairly simple. We accept both the apply IU or the common application. We need your high school transcript, your essay, and then your application fee or your waiver. Um, and we are test optional. This is our policy going forward. So um, you will not need to submit test scores to us unless you so desire to do so. Because we are test optional, we do try to be a little bit more transparent on what we're looking for. So if you are applying with test scores, we're going to be looking for a 2.8 or higher GPA with 1,000 SAT or 19 ACT. If you're going to apply without test scores, we're looking for about a 3.0 or higher GPA. We are part of the Midwest Student Exchange Program. So this means that you're automatically going to get a tuition discount as long as you have at least a 2.75 high school GPA or higher and you're a resident of the state of Illinois. So this drops our tuition down to about $14,000 per year. So we have a total all in right around 28,000 that you can see there. And this is before scholarships. So we have admissions-based scholarships, which are those that you're automatically considered for when you apply to IUPOI. Again, these are test optional. Test stores are not required for these scholarships. We have honors college scholarships, will, which will require require test scores to receive those. And then we have a number of other competitive scholarships and diversity scholarships that you can apply for separately after being admitted to IEP. Um, last but not least, this is our contact information. As I said, we're both here in the Chicagoland area. We do have virtual sessions, in-person tours, and you can also meet with us with individualized appointments that you can find on our website. So we really hope that you will check us out. And if you have questions, don't hesitate to let us know. Thanks so much. All right, thank you. Next up, we have Central Michigan University. All right, thank you. Uh, last but not least, um, Central Michigan University. Um, good afternoon, students. My name is Ezra Johnson. Um, I am Assistant Director of Admissions at Central Michigan University. 
Um, like many of my other colleagues at other universities have said, I am a regional uh, employee. And so I live uh, here in the Chicago area. Um, you know, one thing I like to do when I'm in these fairs where there are a number of schools that go before me, um, and you hear a lot of different information and a lot of it is the same. Um, so I like to kind of sit back and just decide what it was that I didn't hear um, or approach it from an angle that I might not have heard. So number one thing that I want to do, first of all, again, Ezra Johnson, here's my contact information, QR code. You can put your phone over that um, and that will direct you to our website um, and more information to, uh, to connect with us. Um, Central Michigan University is um, about doing. So our mantra is we do here. Um, it's not about sitting in classrooms and taking tests and having a bunch of homework and graduating with a piece of paper and saying, oh, I have a degree. Your purpose of going to college is to um, learn a subject or have a skill that somebody is gonna pay you some money for. So it's about getting a job. Um, and when it comes to employment, most employers are looking for a combination um, of a degree and experience. And so what we like to um, emphasize is the opportunity for you to have an, um, a real world experience coupled with your classroom experience. Um, I once seen a quote that said, all classrooms do not have four walls. And so we like to put students in particular situations so that they can have opportunities to learn, um, get their hands dirty and their feet wet. Um, so we really like to focus on making students prepared for the world of work so that you spend this four years or five um, and all this money that you get something that is going to have an immediate return on your investment, which most people looking for a job when you graduate. Um, so we are again, Central Michigan. We are located in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, which is in the center um, of Michigan. It is a four and a half hour drive uh, from here in Chicago. Um, not too far, um, but, but not close. I think it's far enough that you'll be able to feel independent, um, but it's close enough that uh, if you had a family emergency or you just wanted to get home because your friend's birthday is coming up or whatever have you, um, you can do that. Um, our campus size is 18,000 students. Um, with 18,000 students, our classroom sizes are about 20 to 25. Um, so we have real state of the art technology in our classrooms, um, collaborative collaborations between faculty and students. So the ratio is, is one to 20. Um, so you have an opportunity to really get to know your professor, your professor really get to know you. Um, you're not in an overwhelming scenario where you don't feel comfortable asking questions. Um, you know, if you needed to kind of get some more focus on a certain topic that was taught in the classroom. Um, you can always talk to your teacher or professor after. Um, and then our particular professors do have office hours. Um, again, the purpose is to teach you things that you can learn and use once you graduate. So if you are in a classroom and not getting the information, if you're not soaking the information up, um, we have professors that wanna make sure that you get the information that you need and you're able to retain it and use it. Um, we have over 200 labs on campus. Um, one thing that we do encourage is um, on-campus student jobs. Um, and some of these pay, most of them pay, some of them do not, um, but it's easy to find those that pay. But this is an example of how we like to get you involved so that you have experience that matches your education, that matches what you've read in the books. Um, and so we encourage on-campus jobs. Um, and you can also um, get and be a part of um, research. And, and I know research doesn't sound like a fun thing, but um, innovation starts with research. So to be on the cusp of, of, of figuring out the next COVID vaccine um, or figuring out the cure for AIDS, um, those things take research. And so while you're on campus, you have the opportunity to get involved in research projects that some professors are already a part of. And that will allow you the opportunity to, to, to kind of discover new things because the world we live in, it's all about what's next, what's new, what's different, what's innovative. And sometimes, a lot of times, research um, is how you discover those things. We have over 150 study abroad programs. That's another uh, initiative that we encourage that allows you to get real world, literally world experience. Um, when it comes down to um, employment, there are a lot of people who need jobs and not often a lot of jobs available. So it's almost a competition. And so the best way that you can arm yourself to make yourself better than the competition is to be involved in such things like study abroad. 
Um, it allows you to have a real world lens on how things work in your particular field. So we are in, of course, the United States of America, and we view science, math, um, arts in a certain way. And so we're limited to our experiences through the lens at which we see it. Um, but when you study abroad, you get to understand art from um, London's perspective. You get to understand science um, from the Chinese perspective. And so when you come with all of those experiences and it's time for you to interview for a job and there are multiple other candidates, that, that particular lens that you are able to discover and see things is gonna be different. Um, and so we encourage people to, to uh, experience other cultures, to um, get out of your surroundings and to understand the world because we live in a global um, economy and to understand that and see things from more than your perspective of United States and or Chicago, Illinois will, very, will go very well and very far in your opportunity to be able to find jobs. Um, also, uh, over 5,000 internship programs. Um, we do have an Office of Career Services that will help you find internships. Um, you can start internships as early as your freshman year. Um, and so you can get it, have an internship all the way through. Um, we have over 500 majors. Um, our admission requirement is a 2.0. Um, at, at the current moment, we are test optional. Um, and we have uh, confirmed that we're going to be test optional next year as well. Um, it is uh, mandatory for students to be on campus your first two years. Total cost of attendance, $26,716. No out-of-state costs or fees. So whether you're from Illinois, New York, wherever have you, same cost. Um, our scholarships start at 75% or, or, or the highest is 75% of your tuition. We have um, test optional um, GPA based scholarships that you can get. I'll drop this information in a link in the chat um, and um, I'll drop my information in the chat. And if you're looking for an opportunity to grow, learn, develop and in turn be great and have the best opportunity to get an education that's gonna get you employment, Central Michigan may be a good option for you. Um, I'll drop the information in the chat and hope to hear from you soon, thank you. All right, thank you. If I could have all the panelists uh, come back on screen, please. All right, uh, starting at the top, the same order, what piece of advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Hello again, this is Erica with Wayne State. Um, I would recommend really thinking about what you're looking for outside of academics. Um, I, I tell students it's really important to remember that just as much as um, colleges choose you, you are choosing a college as well. So it's a two-way uh, relationship. So it should be a right fit. It's a big investment, as Ezra said, right? You want to make sure it's something that's where you can see yourself. So when you close your eyes and imagine being in, in college, what does it look like? Where are you? What are you doing? I think you guys are smart. Whatever you choose, hopefully, you know, you're putting your academics at the forefront. But beyond that, you're going to find that there are hundreds of schools that offer what you want academically. What do you want to do when you're not in class studying? Who are you hanging out with? What do you, where are you going? Um, what's the feel of that campus? So really think about all of those factors that, you, that might not be the first thing you think about like academics and financial aid. Those things are important and will come, but think about those other little things that are gonna make college memorable decades from now. Are we all answering? <laughs> that was a pretty that was a pretty compact answer. It's going to be a hard one to follow. Um, I would say that this is your process. So um, uh, asking the most questions is while you may think that it might be a question, it's a silly question. I shouldn't even ask it. Ask it because um, that's the only way you're going to get the most information to make the best decision for you. This is your process. It does not look the same for every person. So making sure that you take the time to really investigate like um, like Erica said, what it is that you want and what it's going to take to get there. Um, I saw a question earlier, like what are some things that really successful students do at your school? And I would just say making sure that that process is theirs, making sure that they know their path and that, you know, even if you're not sure what your major is, that doesn't mean you don't, you know, you don't have to know that you want to go to school. You can, you can go to school and not know your major. That's totally fine. And having the, the patience to be like, it's okay that I don't have it all figured out right now. This is a junior, you don't have to have it all figured out. My advice for your college search process would be um, keep your options open. Um, apply to those random schools that 
came out of nowhere or you didn't even think would be of interest to you because you never know that might be a good fit for you that might be the school that gives you the best financial aid package um, and oftentimes what I see is that you know there's one student that's going to this school and so all of their friends are also going to go to that school like try to expand your network to more than just that school that everyone else is applying to because like I said you never know that might be the right choice for you. My advice is, you know, connect with your admissions counselor, um, ask those questions, um, and then also get on campus. I think stepping on campus and really and feeling the environment is a big part of the decision process as well. So much great advice. Um, my advice is to lean on your support system. So whether or not that is your friends, your family, your parents, aunts and uncles, school counselors, etc. Make sure that you are meeting with them, you know, talking things out with them. They'll be able to provide some insight just from the back to being older. My dad always says, you know, I've been your age. You've never been my age. Every once in a while, just listen to me because I may know what I'm talking about. So just make sure that you have that support system there, whatever it may be, and that you're leaning on them as you go through this process. Yeah, a lot of great advice uh, given. I would say apply to multiple different types of schools, um, large schools, small schools, um, apply to some HBCUs, um, apply to some schools far, apply to some schools that you consider to be close. Um, and, and like one of my colleagues said, you have to go on campus. I think it's kind of tough to do that now, um, but the right school is gonna feel right to you. And I know that's kind of a buzzword, but I'm telling you, you're gonna be places and people on campus are gonna say hi to you. People are gonna be opening doors. You're gonna be seeing things in the, in the parking lot. You're gonna be like, wow, like, I think this is it. And, and you'll know. Um, so just apply to diverse different schools. If you have a ch chance to go visit, visit, and it'll, it'll, it'll tug at you when it's the right one. Uh, fantastic advice from all of our panelists. Uh, and my last plug is, reach out to these folks here, uh, talk to them, find out more about these institutions to see if it is a good fit for you. Thank you again for joining us. When you leave, there is a four question survey that is incredibly helpful. You can sign up for more sessions. There'll be more of these types of affairs in the future as well. And a recording of this and all of our sessions will be available at StriveScan's website. I put the link of that in the chat as well. So best of luck to you out there, students, parents, and thank you again to our experts, our panelists, and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.